Hey guys, welcome to our channel. So we're taking a break from our regularly scheduled decode here. Um, it dawned on me that I believe it was the Donald Hoffman fella when we were looking at simulation theory, separated himself from uh, solipsism. And he said it wasn't like solipsism. Um, so there was, and uh, I'd heard this before. I thought, I was sure that I saw somebody go through this before the taking a look at solipsism or at least breaking down a video on it. So what is solipsism? Well, solipsism and the problem of other minds. We have internet encyclopedia of philosophy, a peer reviewed academic resource. So it says here, solipsism is sometimes expressed as the view that I am the only mind which exists or my mental states are the only mental states. However, the sole survivor of a nuclear holocaust might truly be come to believe in either of these propositions without thereby being a solipsist. Well, yeah, probably um, if you were the only person left. <laughs> Um, solipsism is therefore more properly regarded as the doctrine, a doctrine right here, that, well, you know what, let's, uh, the doctrine, let's just uh, define doctrine here, a belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a church, political party, or other group. A stated principle of government policy, mainly in foreign or military affairs. Um, it would be more the first definition, noun. A belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a church, political party, or other groups. But the key word here is a, a belief or set of beliefs. So, and of course... And of course, a belief is an acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists, trust, faith, or confidence in someone or something. So it's a belief, just an acceptance that something is true. You notice there's nothing here about proof or evidence, trust, or faith, and we looked up faith before. Faith is believing something without proof. So... All right, so back to this, uh, the solipsism is therefore more properly regarded as the doctrine that, in principle, existence means for me, my existence, and that of my mental states. Existence is everything that I experience, physical, objects, other people, events, and processes, anything that would commonly be regarded as constituent of the space and time in which I coexist with others is necessarily constructed by me as part of the content of my consciousness. For the solipsist, it is not merely the case that he believes that his thoughts, experiences, and emotions are, as a matter of contingent fact, the only thoughts, experiences, and emotions. Rather, the solipsist can attach no meaning to the supposition that there could be thoughts, experiences, and emotions other than his own. <laughs> In short, the true solipsist understands the word pain, for example, to mean my pain. He cannot accordingly conceive how this would be applied in any sense other than this exclusively egocentric one. Holy shit. <laughs> Let me read that again. And you guys can understand that this gives me, I mean, you guys can understand this isn't good. This gives me the heebie-jeebies. And I, I'm a guy that knows how to defend myself really well and handle stuff. But 
<laughs> in short, the true solipsist understands the word pain, for example, to mean my pain. So his pain, her pain, their pain only. He cannot accordingly conceive how this would be to how this word is to be applied in any sense other than this exclusively egocentric one. Talk about egotistical. Um, these are the kind of people that would have no problem harming other people. Huh? Harming and hurting other people. Yes. With no compassion. Harming and hurting other people with no compassion, as my fiance just said, yes. Um, <clears throat> and why would they? Because they believe that they're the only ones that exist. Only their feelings matter. Only their pain is the real pain. So that's not a good thing. And uh, how about a summary of this? And uh, whoops, we just, nope, nope. Yes. So here's a summary, and I'm going to go and uh, if you stick with me, I'm going to go uh, check this against nihilism here because it's down here. But solipsism is a belief that there is nothing outside of one's own mind. So their mind, what's in their mind, that's the only thing that's real, according to solipsists. So if you are not real, you matter not to them. If, if you're not them, they, they, you're just in their mind. That's, that's a scary thought, a little bit. It's a strange view that very few people have seriously advocated, but it's surprisingly difficult to disprove. Oh, I bet. How could you disprove that? <sighs> just much like many religions you can't disprove those either but they can't prove it and these guys can't prove their claim either and so it's it's difficult to disprove and so it's kind of a sticky problem in the history of western philosophy understanding solipsism will allow you to understand one of the most central problems of philosophy, the boundaries between the self and the world. Psychologists believe that we all start as solipsists. At the moment of birth, a baby can barely sense its surroundings, so its perceptions are entirely internal. Very young infants may not be able to distinguish between their own body and external objects. Well, yeah, you're an infant. You don't know anything. Why? How? As they grow, babies learn the limits of their own bodies and slowly develop an awareness of the outside world. Well, of course. Um, <clears throat> even then, however, there are some quirks. For example, you've probably seen parents play peekaboo with babies. Why is this simple game so amusing to babies? For babies, uh, the answer is that babies lack what psychologists call object permanence, meaning they think the only things that exist are the things in their immediate field of vision. If something gets hidden, the baby believes that it has ceased to exist. As we'll see, the philosophical solipsism has some surprising commodities with the thinking of babies. Well, um, now there's three types of solipsism here. Eps Epistemological solipsism in the philosophy of knowledge, epistemology. Solipsism is the idea that we cannot know anything outside our own minds. Solipsists argue that the only true knowledge is what we know about our own internal thinking. Everything else is uncertain and untrustworthy. This is the most common form of solipsism. Alternatively, epistemological solipsism might mean that you are the only being in the universe capable of knowledge. See last section, which is a slightly different position. Then you have ethical solipsism. In ethics, solipsism is the idea that the self is the only thing that matters morally. The moral choice in any situation is to do whatever you think is best for yourself without regard for anyone else. This is kind of what we were we saw earlier. 
Almost no one defends ethical solipsism directly, but some philosophers have argued for ideas that may, in, mo in the eyes of their critics, lead to ethical solipsism. So you might criticize someone by accusing them of ethical solipsism, but few people would accept that label willingly. Well, yeah, you know, a few psychopaths, in my opinion, um, <laughs> the only thing is yourself that matters morally. Whatever you think is best for you, you got to do whatever is best for yourself without regard for anyone else. That's not necessarily, I mean, in some cases, that's okay. Um, in other cases, that's not a good situation. Sociopaths. Um, Metaphysical solipsism in metaphysics or philosophy of reality, solipsism is the idea that only the self exists. According to solipsism, I am the only real thing in the universe and everything I see outside myself is an illusion. This implies that other forms of solipsism are also true. If I'm the only thing that exists, then clearly I am the only thing that matters ethically and also the only thing that can be known. So these guys literally believe that they're the only ones that exist and the only thing that really exists. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Well, I thought the whole thing was interesting. Solipsism versus nihilism. Now we're going to go to, and this is uh, a big Lebo the Big Lebowski, the nihilists, um, were the ones that peed on the dude's rug. They're the ones that were, that cut off the girl's toe. The girl cut off her toe. They were trying to get a ransom from the rich Lebowski. Um, they were nihilists. <clears throat> People often confuse solipsism with nihilism, but in fact, they're quite different philosophies. When people say nihilist, they often mean moral sol solipsist. But nihilism is one step farther beyond solipsism. For solipsism, only the self matters. And for nihilism, not even the self matters. Nihilism is the view that absolutely nothing matters. Whether or not it's true, nihilism is almost impossible to believe in consistently. If you were a true nihilist, you would never leave the bed. You wouldn't even turn over in bed to make yourself more comfortable. As soon as you move your body into a more comfortable position, you reveal that at least one thing matters to you, being more comfortable. <laughs> as soon as you eat something or open your mouth to speak, you again reveal that something matters to you. This, of course, doesn't get us very far. It only gets you as far as solipsism. And most people would like to move beyond both nihilism and solipsism. However, it does demonstrate that nearly every nihilist is actually a solipsist, not a nihilist at all. All right. So I tried to find some evidence for this. And what I found um, um, here, and I, I looked a ways here and couldn't find anything, not even like the 15 irrefutable, refutable reasons that we live in a simulated, we live in a simulation or that we may live in a simulation. This says, and this was the best thing I could find, all evidence you will ever encounter is evidence of your own perception and nothing else. There is no evidence available, not the type you seek or the type I would seek. So there's solipsism in a nutshell. Um, now, the first video that I watched um, dealing with simulation theory, that's what the guy was saying. Um, you exist. You're the god of your existence. And all the, and the multiverse is full of everyone else's existence, of which they're the god. They're the only thing there. Everything is created by them. <clears throat> so... Um, the first simulation theorist was a solipsist, um, but I believe it was Donald Hoffman that separated himself from solipsism to say that everybody's playing, you know, a lot of people are playing the game, whatever. But that's solipsism. It's kind of freaky. I mean, 
to think that somebody actually believes that, that might be your, that those are going to be the people that are going to be more likely to be serial killers or just hurt people because they don't matter. They don't exist anyway. Only they exist. Um, so we'll knock that one down right now. Solipsism is, in my opinion, insane. Um, <clears throat> and there's no evidence for it. None. So um, can't be disproven. Can't be proven either. Um, sounds familiar. Um, so we're going to let solipsism then go at that. We'll head that off at the pass right there. And uh, what do you guys think about solipsism? <laughs> um, it could be, it, it seems pretty bad to me that the wrong people believe that. Holy shit. <laughs> so uh, for now, guys, um, thanks for all your thumbs up, thumbs down when appropriate. Thanks for all your comments, leads, feedback, and subscriptions. We'll get back into the Mamwich decode um, within the next day or two. Um, and for now, you guys have a great rest of your day.